Hey everybody, welcome to the Food Explorer podcast. My name is Colleen and I'm your host. Every week I have another topic that I kind of like to delve into. Um, Right now with it being the busiest time of year to be obviously a chocolatier and trying to get a podcast out every week, I'm kind of picking some smaller topics and things that I just kind of find a bit interesting in the food world right now. I'm currently sitting with my foot up and I am icing my ankle because I fell down the stairs and of course I can't stop working right now because I make chocolate and this is really our make or break time of year. So if we don't have tons of sales at this time of the year, we um, we don't survive. So while I would love to be taking a day or two to actually rest my foot, that's not going to happen. I also just finished an in-person tasting event. Basically, it was a winter a wonderland event. And so we went through kind of a, I did like a take on my favorite chocolates and food memories from growing up. So a little bit of quality street chocolates. I don't know. Uh, where you're listening from and if you've ever had quality street chocolates but they were kind of a staple in our house and something that you actually looked forward to at Christmas like you did not get these chocolates at any other time of year so I made four chocolates for the guests to try and they were all kind of like a riff off of quality street and chocolates that I had as a kid and things that I didn't eat until I was older in life but really are very Christmas forward um, for tasting. So that was a lot of fun. And we had some lovely guests and we had some great conversations and we talked all about food and really, you know, that joy of things like mandarin oranges, which is so funny. Mandarin oranges at Christmas, I don't know, they just, they taste better. They seem more special. They come in the box. They got the little green paper around each of them and they're just perfect at this time of year whereas you know now we can get mandarins all year long and they just aren't the same (laughs) so it was a really good conversation what I wanted to touch on with the podcast this week though was um, the idea the myth of free samples and I'm just gonna say this right now free samples are not free There is nothing free about samples. With the chocolate business, we we used to do samples a long time ago uh, in the before times. And part of it was that, oh, I I don't even know how to describe it. Like that need, like we've got to do samples. If we don't do samples, nobody will buy our chocolate. And so I did samples for a long time and it was a, huge learning curve so in the beginning it was you know giving kind of a sample of every single chocolate that we made and then realizing you know don't do samples of the chocolates with allergies in it because rando customers are just gonna reach around and grab samples and run off with them yelling I'm allergic to nuts (laughs) and I'm not even kidding you I actually had One day, a whole group of people in front of me, we were talking and engaged and I was going through the chocolates and just this random woman just reached over in front of everybody, grabbed a sample, threw it in her mouth, looked at me and was like, by the way, I'm allergic to nuts. And I said, well, that's great. You just ate hazelnut. Nobody, and I repeat, nobody that actually has a food allergy just randomly grabs food. So... I don't know what was going on in her life, but I thought it was, uh, it was interesting. So then we, you know, we kind of got this pandemic thing that happened and all sampling was stopped. It was, you know, against the rules. Nobody's allowed to sample. And I was actually, I was pretty gleeful because in my mind at that point, I was looking at these samples and the time it was taking me to put them together, to use ingredients that could have been used to actually sell product. And I just was exhausted with doing it. I didn't want to go through the, oh, do you want to try a sample? Oh, here, 
here's a sample of X, Y, Z, L, M, N, O, P. And it became to the point where I just kind of resented it because here's the thing. People would come up, they would ask for samples, they would try the samples, and they would walk away. And it wasn't that they didn't like the chocolate, it was just they were there for the free samples. And so it's a little bit of this sort of Costco mentality, right? So for those of you that are listening that have Costco or know a Costco, it's a, basically a giant mega superstore warehouse where you have a membership, but there's always people at the Costco doing samples. And the joke is, you know, you can go and have a full meal just eating the samples. You're not planning on buying that item, nor do you have any interest in that item. You're just there for the samples. And so I was, I was getting really frustrated with doing the samples. I didn't like, you know, I'd have six samples of six different chocolates and then somebody would be like, oh, you don't have a sample of this chocolate? Well, no, I don't. And then they would be weird about it. So I wanted to discuss a little bit about how free samples are not free, but also there are lots of people that do samples. And I was uh, just kind of chatting over uh, Instagram with a friend of mine who her business definitely does samples. And she said that she felt like because her product was so different and it's this delightful snack product that she sells, but she felt like because her product was so different, she needed to do samples because otherwise people didn't understand how delicious or how good it was. And so she was doing the samples, but she did say that a market that she just currently did, which is a really big market in this part of the world. Um, I've looked at doing this particular event and the cost of it is just too much, but she was actually at the event, I think last weekend, and she said that they actually handed out about four times the amount of samples that they usually would, but that didn't reflect into four times the amount of sales. And in fact, she felt like she just kind of gave a lot of samples out for very little return. Now with her product, the challenge is that she has to individually package the sample. And this is kind of, there's a few things that have to happen. So to be where we are right now, which is in Alberta, Canada, to have a sample of a product, you have to do one of two things. You either have to individually package that sample so that the customer can actually take it. It has to be pre-packaged in your commercial kitchen prior to you going to your market, your event, or wherever it is that you're going. Or if you want to do samples um, sort of on-site and handing them out as you go, so maybe you're cutting up uh, some bread, donuts, cookies, something like that, and you're cutting it up because you don't want to have a bunch of things that potentially go stale, um, you have to have a hand wash station and yada yada. It's a bit, I don't know. It's like, why? What does it matter? So I, I think it's kind of interesting. So when you look at it, you have to go and you have to do one of those two things. But if you have to individually package all of these samples prior to your event, well, there's a lot of labor costs involved. The time to cut up some samples or, you know, break up pieces into samples package them into a container. Well, one, people just eat. It's one second and they've eaten your sample. And then you have this waste of the, you know, little mini plastic container or the fork or spoon or whatever you've handed the sample to them. And I just think to myself, you know, you had to buy that packaging you had to buy that spoon or fork or, or whatever it is that you're using that's immediately thrown in the garbage. There's no way to actually make money off of it. And the second thing is that you're taking away ingredients and your time and labor to make a sample. Does the sample sell your product? Maybe. 
like my friend said, for her, she does the samples because her product is so different and people won't get it if they don't try a sample. But for other people, like, do you really need a sample of that, you know, pierogi? <laughs> do, you, do you not know what the pierogi tastes like? It probably tastes good. You know, for us with the chocolate, it just got to the point where people will try one of every flavor and then, oh, well, I'm going to go and do a loop around the market and then I'll just come back. And It's like, don't lie to me. I know you're not coming back. But the cost of the samples and the amount of time to put it together, it didn't make sense. I wasn't getting a return on investment. Um, I have another friend that does uh, a sweets business as well, and they definitely do a lot of samples. And to the point where, you know, they're almost doing hundreds of dollars of samples uh, every event. And I think about how much money are they making really doing the samples and how much money they're actually spending to make and package the samples. So it's just something to kind of think about. And what I actually want to do um, coming up is have a bit of a panel discussion with people that do samples and people that don't do samples to see if we can kind of hash out the pros and cons of uh, the samples. For me, it's a definite con. I want people to come to the table, talk to me about the chocolate, and buy the chocolate. What I don't want is, you know, a group of people standing at the table getting free samples, which are not free, <laughs> and having other customers that actually want to buy something kind of on the periphery or in the background waiting for the people that are just what I call eaters. They're just eaters. And that's a bit of a frustration as well as when you have those people that are kind of just there in front of the booth eating away, but you know for sure that they're not going to buy anything. With that, I want to know from you, do you need a sample of something? You know, I think when you go to the grocery store, right, you're not sampling everything. You don't look at the potato chips and be like, mm, I wonder if those are the potato chips I want. No, you just buy the potato chips. <laughs> and not only do I want to know, do you need a sample? And I guess I would say, do you need a sample at a market? Because that's going to actually make a decision. Or do you think it even matters? Like, would you buy the product anyways, just because it looked unique, it looked interesting, there was something cool about it? And the last part of that is, do you think about the cost of the sample that you are enjoying? Do you think about the fact that somebody had to put that sample together, taking away from production time to actually make product that they could actually sell. So it's a few things to um, consider. I have three or four people that are going to potentially be uh, guests in a coming up um, panel discussion. So I think it'll actually be pretty exciting to kind of hash it all out. And the other thing is that I just, I get, I don't know, I just get these thoughts in my head and I think, I wonder if anybody else thinks about this. So a couple of fun things to think about for food. Definitely the highlight of my day was um, doing the tasting event. And I really wanted to eat a bit more of every chocolate that I made because they were, they were epic. They were some really delightful and delicious things. So I actually think I'm going to make a few more just for me to eat because, you know, I have all the power and I can make whatever I want. But with that, a nice short episode again. I promise we have lots of longer episodes coming up just right now with all the holiday madness and, you know, having fallen down the stairs because, of course, that's what I needed in my life right now. Um, I wanted to make sure to be consistent with posting episodes, but also to actually go to bed a bit earlier tonight. Tomorrow's going to be a really long day. We have our last 
weekend at the Banff Christmas Market, which has been amazing as always. And so uh, I got to get all that ready and packed up so that we can actually leave at a decent time on Thursday. It's about a five hour drive uh, to get to Banff and I want to make sure to unload all of the stuff at the market Thursday night when we can actually drive right up to the door instead of what I did last week, which was not get there in time, have to do all my stuff Friday morning, and then my coffee, which was in the bag with my clothes and all of my food, decided the best thing to do would be to jump off my table and land on the ground face first. And <laughs> so my work shirt smelled like a caramel macchiato for the rest of the weekend and my food got wet and I was really unhappy but also I lost the entire coffee so it was just disaster after disaster. This week I'm looking forward to a calmer week. I also will have my uh, partner in crime Jason with me to help out at the market. Where are you at in the world right now whether it's morning, evening or afternoon I hope you are having a great day. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, do all the things, and I will see you or we'll listen to uh, something next week. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great one.